I was yeah. just going to say. It's okay. Yeah. Say it. All right. We're I here. Was say say it. Um, <laughs> most weeks, this actually won't be a problem. Outside of the next two, I'm going to be working from home every Tuesday. So I won't have to worry about commutes. I'll yeah. just be here. Unfortunately, the way things are panning out for training, that's not a thing for like the next three weeks, but soon. So welcome okay. back to Strange Friends. Uh, glad that uh, you all are here. Glad that Serenia could rejoin us and will be rejoining us on a more permanent basis. Uh, we can always yeah. crop that out of the stream later. But, uh, you know, the, the Strange Friends on last, uh, last week's game, uh, had some interesting experiences. Uh, everything from reconnecting with an old friend who happens to be a great worm gold dragon uh, to meeting uh, Bjorno's long lost love uh, and the party getting to experience Bjorno expressing an emotion other than stoicism. Uh, so to that end, uh, the party was flying into Evening Star uh, on uh, either in the carriage or in the case of Alex on the back of Hyperion uh, in search of answers for a way to save their friend Sprocket. Uh, so to, to put you all in, in, in the, the space, uh, you all have, have just flown through this illusory mountain. Uh, and you know, while, when you passed through originally, you, know, you saw the little uh, hamlet of, of, of what you perceive to be Evening Star and what the world perceives as Evening Star uh, outside of the village. Uh, but as you, as you have flown through this illusion, in front of you, you see a grand city. Uh, you, it's got multiple large buildings, bigger than you've seen in any other city. So for context, you know, a city like uh, Baldur's Gate and Waterdeep, a three-story a three building is kind of a big deal. Uh, you know, here you see multiple six, seven-story buildings. Uh, it appears that they have a, uh, a magical shimmer that is, that is actually visible uh, due to the sheer power of, of what is being presented. Um, you know, you, you notice that the, uh, the skies are clear here. The, the weather is beautiful. Uh, you see verdant uh, fields of, of crops that are uh, you know, blowing in the wind. Uh, you gain the, the presence that this is a peaceful place. Uh, it is peaceful and hidden, much in the same way a druid's grotto might be. Um, and as you fly into the city, uh, Hyperion you know, begins to circle around and, uh, let's see, Bimgog and Bjorno, uh, you can roll me an intelligence check. Oh boy. Or, um, Bimgog, yours might actually be survival on this one. Okay. Whoopsie doodles. Um, yeah, you, you, you don't notice anything too out of place. Um, and, and as as he circles around, uh, you know, you, you land in the the center of town. You feel the uh, the carriage, you know, you know, hit the hit the ground and rock a little bit. Uh, but it's you know, nevertheless, placed down in the in the town square, uh, where Hyperion slowly brings himself down. Uh, allows Alex off of his back and, sh and shifts back into his, his human form. Uh, Serenia, at this point, uh, you were you were on the outskirts of town being escorted in by uh, uh, Porto, and essentially you have seen the dragon fly overhead. Uh, I will assume that you have reached uh, town in the next 30 seconds or so, so you're, you're there. Feel free to, to engage in the scene. Uh, but you all are in the center of a massive town, uh, and Hyperion uh, is is very quickly surrounded by a, a group of people in in gold robes, uh, in, in gold and silver robes, I should say, uh, who are who are attending to him as as he kind of you know ushers them away uh, and turns to you all. The so, carriage door explodes off the carriage as Broduck scrambles off of it. <laughs> The people, the people of the town, like quickly back up, and Hyperion, you know, puts his hands out to to calm them. I get down on the ground and I just grab dirt and I just rub it on my face. Oh, oh I'm never flying again, never. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was fun. So we're just gonna walk up, be like, Brodok, are you okay? No. 
Uh, I would. Bugbears aren't meant to fly. No one without wings is really <sighs> meant to fly, but it's okay. It's terrible. Also, where you, where'd you guys come from? They were they were visiting my grotto, Serenia. It was good to see you again. Hyperion kind of leans over and looks at you. <sighs> Fair enough. You too, Hyperion. How 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 have your travels been treating? Honestly, not great. Um, but that's pretty standard, so fine. Serenia, Serenia, our baby's hatched. But we can't see them yet. But they're gonna be so good. Hyperion's gonna teach them all the good stuff. Oh, those babies! <laughs> what babies did you think of? I'm looking around and trying to find out if there's any babies around me and making sure that Brodok isn't near. <laughs> he's right there. But he's just <laughs> he's preoccupied with rubbing dirt on him. <laughs> just just to be clear, so so Brodok's uh, pushing all this dirt up in his face. Uh, and you see a, a woman who's like got like a a, a dirt covered apron with some gardening tools, just kind of watching him uh, as as he's shoveling pieces of her garden up into his face. Does Serenia see all this? Oh yeah, right there. Brodok, Brodok, that's her garden. Stop it. Smell good. Stop it. I'm sure it smells good. You gotta go apologize though. That's her garden. That's her food. Bro, like, stands oh, up and flowers. does, like, a crazy dog shake and, and throws dirt all over the place. He looks at the woman. Uh, sorry yeah, okay, about hey, flowers. Hey. Bro, Doug, do you want to, you want to dig in the dirt, right? No, I'm good now. Yeah? <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for the ride, Hyperion. Um, we should probably go meet that friend who knows that guy. So we can fix the yes. situation. I would suggest that you establish yourselves in town. And uh, I will put in word with the High Richter that uh, there is need for you to have an audience. Uh, hopefully they can put you in touch with Rowan. Yarno takes a deep inhalation and just sort of looks at the ground and then exhales slowly. Ah. Hyperion looks over at you. Everything okay, Yorno? There comes a time where one must learn to let go. Okay, but Rocket wouldn't have wanted us to let go yet. His soul is trapped. We still at least have to get his soul soul out of the sword. You can't you can't leave the soul trapped in there. Can we let it go after that? Mm. Bjorno has a point, and if Rowan cannot help you, it is odds are that Sprocket would be beyond returning, but... Well, let's at least get a couple of consultations about it first, from people who know a lot more magic than us. The strands of fate are strong in you all. You can accomplish anything you set your minds to. But there is wisdom in knowing when a quest should stop and when a new quest must begin. And you watch him turn into a dragon and fly through the city uh, up to a high tower where you see him turn back into a little speck and uh, you assume he, he's going up into the, uh, the royal quarters. This place uh, is really party. big. During, during all of that, Hildy was only half listening, going, I am sorry, this was a loner carriage, and she's casting mending on all the busted stuff. Oh, Bjorno, Bjorno I sees her casting mending. I am so sorry. Yeah, Bjorno sees her casting mending and trying to fix it. He's like, and he starts casting mending with her. <laughs> okay, well, Hyperion said we should establish ourselves in town, and I know the perfect place to do that. Where is the best it? bar in all of the town. Hildy, your spells are better than mine. Thank you, Bjarna. 
Is there good food? Oh, I mean, look at this What's place. Alex? Oh, I thought there was a. I thought okay. Uh, the bar is called the Whispering Oak. And Love it. it. Let's over, go. Over just on the west side of the downtown district. Okay. Uh, you guys, you guys can uh, can start your travels there. Uh, throughout your walking there, you you do notice that uh, you know the the streets are exceptionally clean. Uh, where in in Waterdeep or Boulder's Gate, you would have issues of people leaving refuse uh, or the the problems of medieval of a medieval society, if you will. Uh, they don't quite exist here. Uh, the uh, like I said, the the roads are are there's still brick, but it's a, a very paved and smooth brick. Uh, there, there's gutters for dealing with rain, uh, and and you can you can even hear the birds singing as you walk through the streets. Hey Dave, uh, since this seems so unusual, mm -hmm. I'm gonna cast detect magic and just keep it up for the walk to the tavern to see if it's Roll like there's me. not people cleaning all this if it's that clean. Um, I mean, you do see people cleaning, but roll me a constitution save. Oh, no. Shit. Oh, no. Oh. You are blind. <laughs> Forever. Get my screen to move. Um, you're not blind, but at, like, you, you cast that, and as it starts coming into view, it, there is a lot of magic here. Uh, I... You're actually reminded a lot of uh, the glade, uh, and specifically uh, where lies uh, activities were being held. Uh, just a blinding amount of magic, uh, more more so than can be completed by uh, by mortal hands. Uh, so because I'm familiar with it. This, this type of magic, would I be able to, with that role, kind of accept the blindingness and move forward looking specifically yeah. for where the ley lines intersect and the bigger, smaller, not looking the for problem... anything specific, just as we walk, if something mm -hmm. pops out? Um. Yeah, you could roll me perception. Uh, in general, though, looking for something like that, you're trying to look for a laser pointer in a spotlight. So uh, you do notice that there are some uh, some small uh, marble pillars that you notice in uh, on corners uh, that don't serve any function that you can see, but are very magical. Also, as we're walking, Alex will be like pointing out like, oh, that's a really good bakery over there. And over there, that's like one of the best bookshops in downtown. And if anyone asks her like, oh, what's that big important looking building? She'll be like, I have no idea what that place is. <laughs> I went to school on the other side. <laughs> uh, for those wondering- But she knows the, all the bakeries. For those wondering what the, the big important building is, uh, it is actually the the archives of war, um, which you know, good reason for for Alex not to be in there. Uh, so uh, you is, all make your way real quick. Go. Is that where right. Hyperion went to? No, uh, Hyperion went uh, went up into. So the city is is still built into a mountain. Uh, you know the the mountain that you guys flew through would essentially be like adding an additional mountain in front of a mountain. Uh, for for you know mapping people who did cartography of this age, it would be essentially somebody just missed a mountain. Uh, but for for Evening Star, it, it is their best defense uh, to protect what they have here. Um, and and to that end, there are, there are some uh, political policies uh, that you all will learn in time. Uh, so uh, yeah, as you guys make your way across town, it takes actually about half an hour. Uh, to get across the town uh, for where you're at, uh, you do come to the Whispering Oak. Uh, in, in front of you is a, 
a proud two-story building. Uh, it is it is brick uh, structure with a, uh, a a beautiful oak sign, gold filigree lettering, uh, you know, displaying the namesake and everything. Uh, actual windows on the on the the frames and everything like that with storm shutters and things like that. Uh, but the entrance beckons. We drink uh, here. Yeah, yeah, we can drink here and eat and rush in. hang out with people. Uh, okay. Uh, and Alex will quickly follow in with him. <laughs> um, Alex, you you uh, you walk into the bar uh, and you you very quickly hear, kid, heads up. And uh, Broduck, uh, you see a bottle flying towards you over your head. Uh, catch it as alex oh man uh, i'm bad at catching things what is this guy doing i try to uh, catch Bro it yeah broduck make an athletics check <laughs> okay i'm good at those oh i don't know why i rolled this with advantage 14. it's fine you catch it either way you know broduck reaches up and alex the bottle you were going for is just out of well, i shouldn't say just out of your reach but is out of your reach Dude, hey. I would have totally dropped that. That's that's for the last. Who? I like Man. look over. The, 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 the wee last. Let let him have it too, and I'll approach the bar. Um, hey, so these these are all my friends that I found out on my adventure. I didn't didn't even know they'd let you out of the city. Oh. You were at my going away party, Jude. I I didn't realize you were actually leaving. They yeah, let so no, few we out. went out. We went out. We fought a bunch of cultists and uh, killed a dragon. And we now we have to get a soul out of a sword. There, um, there was news about you. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, we, From. We, we, reports that there had been a, a group of adventurers that were fighting uh the cult of the, the town of greens was attacked and um yeah that even happened, i believe like, baldur's gate got attacked the itself i thought i thought grandma was just lying about how rare dragons were when i, I saw one like the first week out it was very it's been a wild ride since then but Fair anyways, enough. i need all of these people um to get drinks and food and all stuff. right uh, before you all is a, a a halfling, as far as you can tell, he's he's a bit tall for a halfling. Nevertheless, the the telltale signs of the cherub base, and uh, for anybody who who happens to be very tall, the very furry ha uh, feet uh, kind of give it away. Uh, he looks at you all and says, "Welcome <laughs> to the Whispering Oak." And uh, first round of drinks are on the house. Welcome to welcome to town, and he. He brings his fist down on, on two levers behind the bar, and you all watch as drinks are, are flipped up onto the, the table. And he reaches back, grabs uh, two bottles, uh, runs them over each other, and you watch as a, uh, a clear liquid is poured, and then another liquid with shimmering gold flakes uh, is poured on top of it, and the gold flakes settle down into the middle of the liquid uh, and form a little bit of a shimmering ball. Uh, and he offers it forward to all of you. Thank you. That's really fancy. Should we let the kid and, drink? Yeah. I'm looking yeah, around. Looking at Ben Gog. What? What? No, he's he's a fully grown goblin, and he's done the most of all of us. He deserves two drinks. Well, one's on the house. Uh, my apologies. Well, I'll get sir. his other drink. No, 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 my apologies. I'm sorry that, that I'm so small and I look that way. I'm trying to be really big like my other friends because, like, wait, have you met Bjorno? Uh, I, this, this lad. Well, both Bjorno and then I point I, I point at Broduck. And, and Broduck over there can get really big. They go, like, big like a house. And then they walk around and make sure that things are okay. Well, mostly... Bjorn will make sure things are okay. But then, you know, you know that all my friends are, are all sorts of like Serenia, she's really big too, but she can't get bigger. But Imgog, just take the drink. You're not helping your <laughs> point here. Well, well met. Your hospitality is appreciated. 
sticks his hand out, shakes it. It's a noticeably firm grip. Yeah, Bjorno doesn't try any of that stupid macho bullshit. He just gives him a handshake. Well, I can I can put y'all up for the night. Um, if you, if, Alex, how long are you going to be in here? Uh, good question. Um, I have to talk to like some important people probably about what I saw and did. Um, you know, the debriefing part of things. So, uh, it also depends on how long it can take us to find, uh, somebody who can bust a soul out of a sword. Um, bust a soul out of a sword. Yeah, it's like soul trapped in there. It's a bad time for the soul. Now, I've heard a lot we of... Were, um, wait, was that when we were invading the cl the, the cloud castle or was that when we were invading the castle in the swamp it was the swamp castle shit yeah no he's been stuck in there a long time we need to get his soul out of there well um i don't know anything about uh, that sort of uh magical work um but i do know about good food bed and drinks um and, and uh you all notice that you know there's orders coming in behind him and he's filling the orders and you watch as he he puts his hand above uh, on the cabinetry above the bar and he'll, he'll sling a drink and it goes around the rail system uh, before, before reaching the other end of the bar and then dropping down into the customer's hands. Bar is awesome. So, so I told you, this uh, is the best bar. <laughs> why don't, I, why don't uh, the first night's on the house, uh, but why don't you at least plan out a week? Um, I. I don't know if you know this. Um, I've seen you around last, and he points up at Hildy. Queen's, Queen Corvana's been in a bit of a weird way lately. Cool. He kind of, and he kind of starts hushing his tone and, and scooting a little bit closer. Bjorn, Bjorno's going to take a knee and listen. They're, um, they're not letting people out. The city. They, uh, Hilda, your your caravan was the last to leave. Oh, how did how did? Well, it's none of you my You don't business. want to know what happened. Well, um, I mean, I hear I hear a bit being the head of the the, the business association, but um, something something strange is afoot. Keep your noses clean, but uh, if you find out anything worth knowing, keep me in the loop. So, uh, weeks weeks worth of rooms for the lot of you uh, would be would be ten gold uh, individual room for you all, or would you like uh, bunking together? We've got the, the 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 two the two giant folk can get a room. Uh, we've got Me the and goblin, underlings stay in room uh, together. The... No. No, Bim -Gog, did you want to Oh no, I'm gonna stay with Alex because we're gonna get bunk beds. Uh, Bjorno's face is turning beet red. Brodog, bro Brodog, you and I are going to bunk together if Bimgog and Alex are bunking. What's a bunk Don't bed? Don't wake me oh, up. Oh, uh, well that is inappropriate. I will buy oh, my own bed oh, for more than ten gold. We can do that. I can stay with you. Hildy, oh. I can stay with you, and well, we can put the men in a room together. You all don't need to bunk up. I'm happy for the price to give you each an individual room. My apologies for the presumption. No, uh, no. A separate room for the... For individual the... rooms aren't safe, though. I agree. Individual rooms are safe. Attacked. There's no safer place than Evening Star. Mm, I honestly, like, if you. if you want the chance to, like, sleep in, like, your own room for once, like, that would be the chance to take it. Out there. Own room? We don't have to share bed? No. Well, well, you guys were sharing beds? Didn't we get enough beds for everybody in the other rooms? It is very Anyways, apparent you can have to your anybody, own room. It is very apparent to anybody looking that as the mention of own rooms are there, Bimgog's assessing how much rope he has on his person. <laughs> like, it is very clear Bim, that Bim that's Gog, what he's doing. I'll, like, still, he's, I'll still stay with you, though. Bimgog, I'll I still know. stay with hey, you. Can, we get, can we get rooms next to each other? Of course. That will help the rope situation. Okay. All right. 
and he passes out keys to you guys. It's all the same price. It's she, Alex is like family here. I mean, God knows she kept she kept us in business for years. Yeah, but we don't want to put you out of business by taking six rooms. Last, we're paying I'm for the that. head. I'm the head of the business council. Going out of business ain't my concern. Let me do you a kindness. You may be here a while anyway. Well, Hildy since we... Over, oh, Hildy leans over to Bjorn now says, mm. Bjorn now, I can see why Bim God said that that spicy mushroom would have yelled at the tree out. <laughs> oh, yes, she's quite <laughs> spicy. That is true. Trinian nods you... emphatically. I don't know what the situation is. I don't care. I agree. You'll get along very well. Uh, good end, Gib. I desire to take a bath. Ah, well, um, well there, I, I I do have a, a bath, a bathing room. Uh, there's also the baths uh, in town. Uh, quite nice. The bathhouses are uh, very luxurious. They uh, actually have uh, some hot springs that you can take advantage of. Scented soaps, all the like. I'd be happy to draw you one either way. Please, I would prefer to, to bathe alone. That's a problem. Uh, he you know, leans over his shoulder and you know, hollers for one of the the the, the other innkeepers, and uh, she goes off and starts drafting a bath for you. Do you have a, a set of rooms like at an inn cap where no one should pass by the first door? That's not one of us or one of you. Well, I've I've only got ten rooms, um, and you're giving us six of them. Dude, they don't get a lot of tourists here. It's fine. He points at Alex. Honestly, other than people who drink a little heavy and decide they don't want to cross the city, they don't get a lot of business from from the rooms. So can we take the back and... six then? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. And be, um, can you give hungry. me the names and information of anyone of your employees who might be coming back here? So if we set a century, we can make sure that they can come. But like, Lass, there Maria. hasn't been there hasn't been a murder <laughs> in Evening Star in thirty something years, and, and petty petty theft doesn't happen either. I mean, it does, but usually just some you know lads out after their classes. I'm not trying. I'm not trying no, to talk I, you into letting I, your defenses down. I'm I just saying. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's just the last couple of times that we thought we were sleeping somewhere safe, bad things happened. And I'll, t- I'll I'll tell you what. I'll stay in the inn tonight. No, you don't have to do that. I'm just asking if I can set my own century. The and... missus could use a break from my snoring. No, I'm not. I don't want you it's to fine, actually sir, work. Sir. That's this Therania, boy, just... me hungry. <laughs> Therania, it'll be okay. Oh. I mean, we could just go to my house, but I don't have enough rooms, and we don't have to just bunk on the floor like it's sleepover. Sleepover time at Alex's house. We can well, talk okay, to your I'll... grandma, and it'd be so cool. And we can sit there and and, and make things and like have a craft time. It'll be so good. Big Bug's right. super excited. <laughs> He, 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 it, there's not enough space for everyone to fit. He, Listen, I'm not trying to downplay the positives of everyone having their own room. I just, like, I, you know. Would you like it? Would you like me to see if we can summon a force cage for you? For you know, protection? actually, if if that artificer kid is still around, if you could just have him come ca- cast yeah, would... alarm on the end of the hallway. Oh, I can uh, cast alarm. Oh well, then yeah, then just we'll just have him put up an alarm when we go to sleep. It's fine. Yeah, I was just gonna do that, but with Shitzel, it's a little different, but it's the same. Well, but that's fine. I think I think the last thing we should worry about is is sleep at a time like this. You're all hungry. Uh, we've we've got we've got just about everything you want. We've got uh, you know steaks, uh, lamb, mutton, um, mutton. Yes, we have mutton. Yeah. Uh, some some hummus, some haggis. Oh, I'll take oh, one cow God. and three chickens. Kind of looks over at you. You'd probably be best with a nice steak and a good berry. 
Okay, I guess I eat berry like in forest. <laughs> Uh, he he brings everybody uh, essentially, you know, for 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 Bjorno, uh, a nice leg of mutton, uh, yeah. you know, mashed potatoes, a big stack of greens, but covered in a nice, a hearty salsa. Bimgog, Bimgog, plate of entrails. I have a plate of oh, I think entrails. A plate of weird entrails that just like you know, look, I don't like them to be too. I really don't like it when they're overcooked because it makes them everything like really, really tough. And you know, it's it's as natural as that they be able to get a good bite into it. You know. No, okay. Ben Gog, you need you need spice. It make it make everything better. It make explosions of flavor in your mouth. Mm. Truly, Broduck that... understands the path to Flavor Town. You have to spice like your entrails just right. I'll try uh, it. You each are brought out a tray of entrails, um, yeah. which funny enough, if, if somebody, uh, Bimgog, after looking at it for a while, you realize that it's sheep entrails. So, you know, probably the same animal as Bjorno. Uh, Hildy, what do you want? Uh, Hildy is, uh, has decided to be a vegetarian. Taking a life is not acceptable. So it's a... Uh, the quinoa, the beans. You, you, you are brought a vegetarian platter, uh, stacked full with a variety of nuts, legumes, uh, just about everything you could wish for. Uh, Serenia, you are brought a similar tray on presumption. Uh, Serenia will make a passive-aggressive comment about how. Uh, taking life is part of keeping alive and while she appreciates the um, offer and it is delicious she is not a vegetarian oh is there something I can get you as, as she says that I like no give, give of course not it's delicious it's, it's, it's <laughs> Bimgog, I I will eat that if if you have too many. I, I oh, it's it, funny. It, it just you know, I live within the cycle of life, which some people assume to mean that I don't take life. But how many people have we killed? Right, I clearly do take a life. So, you know, I'm going to book you all some therapist time too. It sounds Probably like a good, good idea. The lot of you. What's that? Um, there has been a lot of trauma in this group. I will only accept <laughs> a a therapist uh, within my own group. So is that someone who plays instrument? The Enclave yeah. and a druid. But if you feel like I need to seek one, I will absolutely seek one within the Enclave, who is a druid. Well, they play uh, the instrument of the brain. You all, mm. you all are set up for the evening. Uh, I've got other guests, guests to wait upon, but uh, should you need anything, uh, feel free to call me. Uh, the name's Bartholomew. And he goes back Thank to, you, Bartholomew. to serving the other guests. I'm Broda. Bjorno chows down and then goes and takes a bath. After after his his plate of entrails and trying to make sure he didn't leave a mess because he realizes this is a, a really swanky establishment, he brings out his his notepad and he starts drawing to try to get an idea of how the drink system works because he's pretty convinced that that would make the Goblin like really a place on the map. So he I so, know he understands he can't <laughs> understand how it works. I'll, he's I'll start trying. pointing out like helping him see like how it works. When I know so, he's starting to draw it. So Bimgog, as you watch it, you notice he doesn't use it super often. It's usually when he's occupied with another customer, but filling another order. Uh, but what, what you're able to premise is that there is a basically a, a rail or a, a, a gutter might be a better way to describe it, um, that he takes the glasses and sets them into. And there's some sort of bearings on the inside of it that allow the glass to slide. Um, and, and after watching him do it a few times, you hear 
As it reaches its final destination, a small tink as the glass connects with something to stop it. Uh, the one thing you can't figure out is how it's stopping and how it knows where to stop. Well, we're going to have to figure that out before we well, leave. I'm pretty sure that part is just magic. And That's Alex takes another say. shot. <laughs> they all say it's magic. I mean, a lot of something. things are magic, Bim Dog. The wind, my You're fire. Right back, guys, keep role playing. The rain, <laughs> fire. Yeah, see? Sometimes the dirt. Not as often, though. Like, you'd be surprised. Swords, armors. Yeah, you're right. Everything is magic. (laughs) Why do you eat leaf? Because he, like, looks at Hildy. Because taking of a life that is not necessary is against what I believe. I do not need to take a life. You live on leaf like now? To eat. Yes, pretty much. Uh, cows are majestic animals who give many things. They still eat the eggs and the, the milk that they of chickens and the milk of the cows, but I will not take a life to sustain myself. Bartholomew, uh, Bartholomew leans over and says, you know, cows have best friends. It's true. <laughs> My best friend was a cow once. Um, Hildy, I want to to start off by nature saying nature is nature. I understand, no, but I, I do not need to take a life to sustain myself. I fully respect. I hundred percent respect it. I just, I mm, no. I have one question though, and. Are trees alive? Yeah, yeah, but they're not sentient, so it's okay. I can talk Unless to them, but they're not sentient. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, but cows are definitely alive. But milk is kind of murder. It what? is not murder. How is milk I did murder, murder a cow once for milk. And there are totally some sentient. You are tortures. thinking of a mass production company that presents. <laughs> Milk to many, many people. We are talking about individual small communities that support each other. Now, there with is the more no death. <laughs> there I... is no death involved in the acquisition of milk. Well, is it local milk or is it Baldur's Best? Yeah, I guess I as, long, I, I, as long as you're milk here. I, I fully you don't support get milk your position because outside. Do you want to meet the cow your milk comes from? Will that make you feel better? We can actually talk to them. They like love their jobs. We I would love I would milk. love to talk to the local milk farmers, Alex. <laughs> can we My, arrange for that tomorrow? My dad was I would love I'm gonna talk to the cows specifically. Make Bjorno sure Bjorno just drains. Best. Bjorno just drains this tankard. Uh, so is Broduck. Broduck's just voice just starts healthy. drinking. At the end of the day, I absolutely respect animals. I love animals, but... Uh, Bartholomew it's... comes over, pours the rest of the bottle of milk in, in your, your glass, Serenia. Uh, looks at it and says, count number 318. Puts it, puts it down in front of you. I didn't ask for milk, sir. I'm kind of lactose intolerant. <laughs> You know, you all are a weird lot. Bro Very rushes strange, over his shroud and the glass and drinks it. What is... What? <laughs> Bro will continue to travelers? eat throughout the evening, Dave. Um, okay. Unless they actually give him a good berry. Um, Broduck is in a place where there is um, a lot of food. So he is a feast or famine creature from the wild. So he will eat until he is engorged and then he will go to sleep. He won't stop until then. Your third plate, your third plate has a small berry on top of it. I'm like eating everything. On top of all it's good. Oh, it's good. (laughs) Then drink a bunch and then Broke's going to bed. And now you feel completely full. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Broduck heads off to sleep. It's messy. He leaves a complete mess behind. 
Uh, no tip. Your, no, no your tip. bath is 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 drawn and ready. Um, it is it is a large tub, uh, and and it's clear that they um, they have magically enhanced what would be a normal sized tub specifically for you. Um, the the water has a has a a nice fragrant smell to it, uh, like a a sandalwood bourbon. Uh, in, in the soap and everything, uh, as you as you settle in uh, to the tub, what are you thinking? Ah, uh, man, I'm just thinking about all of the trials and tribulations we've been through lately, and how I need to be more adaptable to solving these problems that we are continuing to encounter. Uh, my thinking has been very rigid lately. And uh, I need to start embracing possibility as opposed to being so rigid and narrow-minded about things. You, I mean, you, you process those thoughts and, and, and right as you're uh, really starting to get relaxed past the, the, the initial uh, weight of everything finally, in essence, washing off your shoulders, uh, there's a, a knock on the door. Enter. Uh, a, a young lady uh, walks in uh, wearing, wearing uh, innkeeper garb and whatnot. She has a, a bucket uh, with some some uh, scrubbing tools and things like that. Would you like the deluxe bath? Oh, of course. It's, it's only five silver more. Oh. Uh, and she spends the next uh, 30 minutes scrubbing just about I do, everywhere. I press the Y button and would rather not make conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, but you feel completely refreshed and cleaned. Uh, she even, even after she leaves, she sets out some towels uh, that are resting on a metal rack well above a, a fireplace in the corner. So the towels are nice and hot. Uh, there's some powders and assorted goods for, for cleaning yourself up. Yeah, Bjorno's going to clean his stuff up as best he can, and he's going to hum the build a little house song to himself. Um, Hildy, what do you do with your evening? You've been here before. You've been oh, in yeah. this town before. Hildy is going to, while Bjorno is going and taking a bath, pretty much grilling the friends. Alexandra, she says that she's drunk and loose lipped. Say, Alexandra. Has Bjarno been the good man that I think he has, or has has, has he been? Uh, I'll even pull in Bimgog. I'll do Serenity. Well, I don't. I I just I need information. What do you mean, good? Like are Is, you Alex, you, you know what she it? means by good. Are, well, I mean, are like, you hearing the gossip right? sesh? Pull it together, Alex. Well, I just want to like make sure. I don't know. Like he's been pretty great. Like he, you know, he he makes good decisions with his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has like there one been of my personal heroes? Because like, whenever there's something that's bad, he'll run in and make sure that we're all safe. Like he'll he'll go in there and he'll make sure to try to stop everything that's trying to hurt us. And he gets really big and strong. And then you know he makes sure that everything's okay. But I mean, sometimes sometimes he gets a little bit, um. How do I best put it? Like, he he's very, very serious. And and I think he's he's sometimes like trying to trying to be the mountain when sometimes you just gotta you just gotta feel a little bit like getting spoken. Listen, oh. Hildy, woman to woman. Um I have two things that I can say about Bjorno that will answer, I think, the underlying question that you're asking. Mm -hmm. The first of which is, unfortunately, I don't think I've ever heard your name before. However, him and I have shared rooms in taverns, and he has never once made any sort of move on me. And I don't think I've ever seen him make a move on anyone else. So he is a very stoic, stoic dude. So 
I... That is not the Bjarno I knew. He he was very much into his studies, but the Stoicism is very new. Well, it's depression a does a lot to a person, and if you knew him better than we know him, I, I, you know, we barely know him. I barely know anyone here, especially you, but you're asking uh, the questions, and we, I, I can I, appreciate. I ask because we left on less than desirable circumstances. So I wish to know if he he has followed through with his promises and his desires. What did he promise to you? He promised me nothing. He promised to follow the All Father and learn and Oh yeah, oh, he's he's, really he's done doing that. that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, probably he's to all a about that. Like, probably the probably only thing to he's been hearing out. <laughs> it's a pretty fault. much all he follows and talks about, <laughs> like all the time. Yeah. And he he's been like super super big into going through and, and making sure his deeds are true. So he's friends with a goblin. That kind of says a lot. It takes a lot say. to be friends with a goblin. And Serenia is one of my best friends. And Serenia also is friends with a goblin. And that just means that, you know, she has good taste. And that means Biono has good taste. <laughs> I can see that that is true. Good. Thank you. I, I am not going to the grudge uh, a woman looking for real talk about her ex if I have the answers so we were never truly together well the fact that you have to caveat it with truly means there was something there enough that my statement stands (laughs) are you are you wanting to get kissy face with Bjorno (laughs) Bjorno your ears start ringing (laughs) <laughs> I, I sneeze real hard <laughs> and then go back to humming the little house song to myself <laughs> only if he's ready <laughs> you know what I love love we don't see enough of it in this terrible world so uh it is true I was trying to play matchmaker put you guys in the same room I didn't realize it would make you un- I didn't know I didn't know that's my bad we can it's okay. If he never spoke my name, it's either because he forgot or he just didn't want to remember. You know, instead of us speculating, you could always try just going and talking to the guy. That's he seems later. like he wants to be around you all the time anyway. <laughs> or, or we can go ask him for you. No, no, I'm not doing that. And no. I will. I don't okay, care. I, I said okay. I love love. I. Oh my this goodness. world. Well, then don't sucks. say we. I was staying right here at the bar. <laughs> then dog would come with me. I'll so come. That's a we. Absolutely. And I bet you. I bet you. We can say that we'll get it out of him. We'll find out what he thinks. I would never ask that. If it is meant to be, it's meant to be. So. All right. Well, at this point, you guys are deep into your cups uh, and feeling exhausted. Uh, the, 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 the need for sleep uh, becomes very uh, overwhelming, in a sense. Hillary heads to bed. Alex, do Good you night, want the top all. bunk or the bottom bunk? Uh, that's a, actually, I should probably take the bottom one. Okay. Yep, no, very drunk. Definitely should take the bottom one. And she'll stumble into the the bottom bunk. Hey, uh, quick question. Has the new Alice uh, Blue Owl ever shown up? Yeah, 100%. In the last, like... Yeah, it's, it's been occasionally fluttering around the bar, and it flutters next to, next to uh, Bimcog. Uh, before they go to bed, Serena's gonna look at him and be like, you want me to wake up Alex? Uh, uh, Alice? Well, uh, you don't really have to. Like, Alice is talking in my head right now. But what if I made her smarter? I'm already smart. 
You know, she's already smart. Uh, so I heard that, Dave. Yeah, she says it out loud. Okay, I'm sorry, Alice. I was just checking in. I've been away. Okay. Are, are you okay, Serenia, before we go to bed? Because you were away and we were kind of worried. Uh, yeah, yeah, druid stuff. I fi- we figured we figured it was like, you know, druid duties and stuff like that. But, you know, just wanted to make sure if you need anything, let me know. Thanks, buddy. Boomgog looks so excited, and then and he scurries to bed. You all get a, a very restful night's sleep. Um, the beds are the most comfortable you've slept in in a long time. Um, you all wake up in the morning. Uh, a, a breakfast in line with your dietary request the night before is, is sitting at your door. Um, you, know, you all are, 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 are filled to the brim. Uh, and the town is yours to explore. Are there any messages for me? Do I know when I'm supposed to be meeting people? Um, there is, uh, Alex. Uh, it says that the High Richter will see you all in two days. Okay. Uh, and that introductions to uh, Rowan can be made at that time. Cool. Uh, Bjorno is loitering around outside of Hildy's door in the morning, just sort of standing around. <laughs> uh, as as Bimgog, you know, gets like leaves his room and sees Bjorno kind of mulling around, he looks over for a second and he digs in his bag. And he tries to find, and he, he notices that there was one of the flowers that Brodok had chucked around had landed in there. And he just kind of goes up and places it somewhere in his armor for a second, removes it, and then puts it in Bjorno's hand, and then gives him a really, like, and then scurries off. Bjorno, like, kind of cocks his head to the side and then solemnly nods. <laughs> Hildy, you hear giggling outside your door. Oh. oh, the children that are in this town are such troublemakers. <laughs> I come out and open the door, say, you children, what are you doing? <laughs> and I see Bjarno. <laughs> oh, I thought uh, maybe you'd like to have a breakfast and... I, I give you the flower. Thank you, Piarno. Take the flower. I, 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 I put it right beside my, my pendant. But I will have breakfast with you. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go downstairs and shout out. I mean, if the if the if the party has anything that you guys want to do while you're in this town, uh, you're, feel free to explore. Um, you know, otherwise, I mean, two days can pass. Uh, the only I want to go see grandma. That's what I want to do. Go to grandma's. Party at Alex's. Serenia? Uh, I want to check in if there's a enclave grouping here and or any local druids. Uh, there is not an enclave uh, building here, uh, and actually, from from what you can tell, you don't see any of the factions active here. Any druids in general? Um, there is a glade. Um, I want to go hang out the glade. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that? So, so Serenia, are, are you taking anybody with you, or are you going on your own? Um, okay, it's gonna det- uh, depend on timing, right? Because Bjorno said, Let- let's go to Grandma's house. So uh, if day one, we're going to Grandma's, I'll, I'll go with them. But day okay. two, I would go and see if I could go to the Glaive. Okay, um, so Grandmother's house, uh, to Grandmother's house we go. Uh, it's just over the river and through the woods. Yeah, so Alex, <laughs> Alex uh, uh, leads you all uh, around probably 10, 11 in the morning uh, out into the city. Uh, you'll, you'll go through the city core, uh, actually back away from the, uh, from the city center. 
uh, towards uh, the outskirts of town where you all uh, follow her to a, uh, a small house. Um, it is not terribly tiny, you know, bigger than a shack, but, but certainly humble and modest <coughs> uh, with, a, with some small fields outside of it. Um, you, the, the only thing that, that you do notice that stands out specifically about this house uh, is that the entryway uh, is framed in gold uh, with uh, a long uh, stream of letters carved into it very intricately. Um, does anybody speak Draconic? Yes. Uh, Bimgog, Hildy, and Alex, you recognize it uh, as a what is essentially uh, telling a story of the uh, the origins of Alex's family, uh, of storyteller after storyteller. Uh, knowing the, the stories of old and continuing the fine traditions uh, of the past. Uh, and and, and as, the, as the art goes on, you do notice that the words the past are emphasized uh, many times over. Uh, but the, the, the door is there in front of you all. Uh, you do hear a, a soft uh, spoken uh, voice in the uh, operating somewhere inside the building. All right. Well, welcome to where I grew up. And Alex will open up the door like she owns the place and lead everyone in. All right. Hello. Uh, we're back. Well, I'm Alex, back. I, I Alex, want... dear, is that yeah. you? Yeah. Hold on. Everybody, come on in here. Uh, through the hallway. You all are greeted uh, in, in what is a very uh, nice sitting room. Um, you know the furniture is is clearly of good of, of good build and quality, uh, if not looking a bit dated. Uh, could give There's it everything you see on everything. <laughs> uh, a, a a a woman still quite young. Uh, but clearly, uh, Alex's uh, elder in some way approaches uh, and, and you know reaches down and, and is just touches you know puts her hands on Alex. It's my my daughter. I'm so glad you have made it home safe. I, I was worried sick about you. I oh everything was fine thanks to these two guys and I'll point at Bimgog and Bjorno. These guys kept us all very safe out there. Oh, thank, oh, thank and then you all. Serenia, Serenia was actually pretty awesome too. She kept us alive in many ways. And very, very, more. very nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Marie. Uh, I, I'm Alex's mother. I, I, can, can I can I take your coats? Uh, do, do you all need anything? Are, are you just getting into town? Oh, well, Hi, we got I'm it Rita. last night. We stayed at the Oak. Did you say hi to Bartholomew at least? Of course. Okay. Well, uh, glad glad you're all here. Is, is there anything, is there anything I could do for you? Oh, uh, gr greetings, Mrs. Odla. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. You you've traveled far to be here, haven't you? Mm, many many leagues. Looks over at you, Hildy. You, mm, fate works in funny ways. So, so glad that you all could make it here. Um, and and your little friend, as she leans over to you, Bimgog. Yeah. What, what 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 are you? Oh my my name is Bimgog. Pleasure to meet you, Mima. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm not Mima. Well, well, no, she she's out back, Bimgog. Oh, I get it now. Now it makes way more sense. I was like, man, like you look super good for your age. That's amazing. <laughs> she starts blushing. Well, I take care of myself. I uh, make sure to wear uh, sunblock when I when I'm working in the garden. Has, how long has it been since Alex made it back home? Um, and you, she 
left only shortly after she re received the request from the uh, the scholar, Mr. Fizban. That was like basically when she met me. So basically, like I've been one of Alex's friends for like for since she left. So basically, we're all like family now. Yeah, you were my very first friend, Demgog. It's so good. Demgog looks super excited. Alex, I'm so proud of you making friends. You always said, well, I won't, I won't talk about childhood, but Aww. so, so <laughs> proud of you. So, so are you, are you like, were you all the, the ones that, that stopped the cult? I don't know if stop is the word yes, I've used. Yes, and no, actually. Funny story about that one. We <laughs> killed Dragon. For, for a short time, we were inadvertently helping them, but then we stopped them again, so it's fine. And we all learned a valuable lesson in the end. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I heard the cult were attacking uh, and, and people, and the rumor is, is you all had a sky castle? Yeah, oh yeah, we totally had a sky castle. We uh, There was a dragon that took over the sky castle and we got rid of that dragon and we gave it back to the giants. Bjorno, Bjorno gets a real hard look when she starts talking about the sky castle. His, uh, his jaw clenches, but he doesn't say anything. Serenia, same, slightly different reason, same reaction. Well, I'll put on some tea, and um, you all you all can can feel feel free to to make yourselves at home. Um, okay. I was just gonna take him out back to go meet Grandma. Okay, um, the um, the crystal is where it usually is. <clears throat> awesome. I'll get the tea on. She heads back into the kitchen. She's delightful. Oh yeah, Ma Ma is pretty great. And then Alex will lead everybody um, out to the backyard. And I'm actually going to describe it from here if this is OK. Sure. Um, but out in the backyard, it's actually like a really nice garden. Um, there's plenty of like flowers, but there's also like a lot of vegetables um, and edible stuff. Um, and walking through the path, uh, it goes towards like a little wooded area very briefly. And then there's a clearing inside the wooded area that um, is a graveyard. And in the middle of the graveyard, there is a shrine built up that has the Old Blue family crests and story written on it in Draconic. And inside of the shrine, there's a golden dragon and there's a bunch of little notes and letters and presents and, you know, cookies and packages and gifts that people have left at the shrine. Um, and she's like, so my grandma generally hangs out back here. Um, so we made her a nice little place and Alex will start leading everybody through the graveyard. Also while watching Bimgog's face carefully. Bimgog, Bimgog is very confused right now. Like he was expecting to see like some sweet old lady, like with, with the, the, uh, the, realm's equivalent of Werther's candy like and he was super excited for that and then he sees a graveyard <laughs> he just looks very concerned as we get closer you can see on the shrine there's a picture of a sweet old lady that looks like she would give you butterscotches out of her pocket every day uh, in a nice little gold frame on the shrine um and that's my grandmother. Anybody trained can give a, a knowledge religion. Does nobody? I am. Uh, oh. Pildy, you you haven't uh, specifically encountered uh, this family, uh, other than you know when you came into town, it was a big hubbub. Uh, and, and so obviously the town made an effort to get to know you, uh, many as people as it were. Uh, but as you walk through some of the customs that you've picked up in regards to the historical aspects of, of the town of Evening Star, uh, is that uh, each of the names on these tombs uh, is marked as uh, 
uh, not only the age and lifespan of the uh, of the person buried there, uh, but of the dragon uh, for which they served. Uh, and you notice that this is a very large graveyard. Uh, multiple mausoleums set into it. Um, it is still clearly maintained uh, by the family and treated as a family plot. Uh, but you get the sense that this is uh, this is more than Alex's life. So Bjorno is going to take off of his horned helm and put his mace on the ground, and he's going to walk toward the grave and take a knee, and then spread his hands out. Honored ancestor of Alexandra, I thank you for the efforts of your descendant. She has saved my life many times and have protected this group. We are all better for her presence and thank you for gifting us with her. And then he's going to pick his stuff back up and rejoin the party. He'll Alex say, well, Hildy will say to Alexandra, Alexandra, I am greatly honored that you invited us here. This is your family is very impressive and you and your family are very strong. Thank you for bringing us here. Uh, you're welcome. And as she's saying that, Alex is actually like taking a bunch of crumpled up notes that she had written to her grandmother the entire time out of her pocket and just kind of like shoving them, like, like just sprinkling them over to the grave, just being like, uh. Anybody that, that sees Bimgog sees what, what amounts to a light bulb going off on in his head. Like as he figures it out all at once, <laughs> he's like, oh, oh. Huh. He gets real quiet and he kind of scrunches down a little bit. Let's take a quick five minute break, guys.
Welcome back. Uh, when we last left off, the party was learning that Alex's grandma is actually a rock and not the flying type, uh, but like the crystallized urn type. Uh, so why don't we resume from there? So Alex notices Bimgod starting to draw into himself 
I should be like, no, 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 it's okay. She's she's still here with us, kind of. She's still around. Grimgar kind of looks, like kind of eyes up and eyes back. Well, stays like, still really quiet. So she was like very, very powerful with magic, a witch of some kind. Um, and, uh, her body just couldn't hold her magic anymore, so she's still around. You just, you know, sometimes you can't see her. But it's okay. When we talk to the guy, we can bring Grandma back when we get Sprocket. Um, well, Grandma doesn't really work like that anymore, because now she's too big to fit inside of a people body. She's, like, she's the town, part of the town now. She was that important. Simgog, you know how people eat mushrooms? Living people eating dead mushrooms, right? Yeah. Well, living mushrooms also eat dead people. It's a cycle, and it doesn't mean she's not here. She's just part of the bigger system and will continue to exist and be part of the bigger system. I I think I get it. And Bimgog goes and he starts looking around into the dark shaded areas until he sees a small mushroom and he gets really, really close to it and he goes, I need more. <laughs> and then he then he gets back up and goes and he, he seems calmer now. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Is grandma like title for really big magic person in your village? No, she's actually my grandma. She just happened to also be important to the village. She took care of the stories and made you sure watch Brodick look at you, and he's just things. blank when he's looking at you. Like he doesn't comprehend what a grandma is. <laughs> Well, oh, I see. So, you know, you know how you have a dad? Yeah. A father? Okay, so... I met him once. Your Yeah, so your father also would have had to have a father, right? Because everybody has a father and a mother. So your father okay. also has to have a father and a mother. Yeah, so... When, when you know a bunch of people like that all together that are related, then there's different names for them. So you call your father's father, your grandfather, and your, fa your mother's mother, your grandmother, because they're like one step above. In oh. the, do you see how, how that builds? It's like I never a, had it's a like grandmother. A, well, I'm sure you've had one. You've just never met them. You think she's out there? I don't know how long bugbears live for. Not long. Then probably not any. Brook like walks away. <laughs> just he just slowly <laughs> starts walking away as he as he's like starting to formulate like... this. That he like in in a moment he had this this idea of what a family <laughs> was, and then the next moment he lost it all <laughs> as he just slowly walks away. Oh, he just like looks at her hands like, "What did I do?" Uh, as as Brodok walks, uh, Bimcock turns to Serenia and goes, "If we find where." His his grandma went and and where like his family was at, then it makes sense that Broda could talk to the mushrooms and meet his grandma. I don't know if he could meet his grandma, but he could appreciate the life that his grandma produced in the cycle. Anyway, my mom has tea on. I'm sure she has cookies too. Um. Uh, actually, <laughs> at that moment, uh, Miriam comes back out. Uh, she has a, as, as expected, multiple uh, 
kettles with tea, uh, an arrangement of cookies. Uh, there's a nice garden patio uh, that she kind of sets everything out on. Um, she she brings over some more sturdy reinforced chairs uh, for the four members of the party <laughs> who are larger than life. Uh, Sir, and you will sit on the ground. Thank you. So what brings you all here? Well, we're... One, we don't one, often get visitors. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Hyperion vouched for all of them, too. But... I saw him flying in. How is he doing? He's actually doing really well. He's actually raising little black dragons right now. They're very... We haven't met them yet, but I'm just assuming that they're very cute. I understand you that they are. <laughs> Um, anyways, but uh, we had this other friend um, with us. His name was Sprocket. Um, and unfortunately, his soul got trapped inside of an evil sword. Um, so we're trying to, like, jailbreak him on that one so we can right. revive him. Because um, we totally would have revived him in time if it wasn't for this whole soul thing. And I figured, you know, uh, if anybody could break souls out of things, it'd probably be somebody here. Because no one in, in water deep can. Rowan could probably be your best bet at it. Yeah, but he's a, he's gonna talk to us the day after tomorrow. But um, he's been very busy lately. the The towns had there's been a lot of new commerce happening, as far as we can tell. A lot of um, there's been a wave of new technology. Uh, that's been very interesting to watch coming out, um, which is unfortunate because I, I feel like uh, people have started to step away from what made us so special. Like from outside or from inside? From isn't, inside. Isn't uh, development but, from the inside good? It is, um, and and Hajimi's work has has added so much uh, to to more than we thought that we could have ever accomplished. Um, but the people have stopped telling the stories as much. It's, I'm glad that you're back. It's you're needed here. Well, you know, there's also a cult out there. Well, you defeated them. That's it's over. Well, no, they're not like defeated. N not like really. Yerno gives Hildy a hard look when this conversation starts. What do you mean? Well, I mean, they're not just, you know, one thing that you can just defeat. They have like multiple branches and like multiple different people all with their own like agendas and stuff it's not like as simple as just stealing a couple of eggs oh it's a concept not a person yeah like they're trying to bring tiamat back why would anybody do that i don't know like i keep trying to talk to these cultists and like get a real answer out of them about it and like most of like the first ones we met were just like a bunch of like mercenaries who were just like there for the money, um, which there was another mercenary that we met, but we convinced him to stop working with the cult. Um, and then, but yeah, they all have like thrown in and they, they have like dragons working with them and stuff. Like they have you, more than one, like they're multiple dragons. You cannot reason with the unreasonable. And unfortunately, there are those who have thrown their lot in with chaos, hoping to reap the benefits of the flux and change. A chance to change their stars and position, and perhaps make their own goals manifest. She looks kind of, kind of, uh, a visible look of concern and puzzlement comes over her head, or over her face. I... I had hoped that that the chaos that had been brought forth by such was to be quick to end, but if you think that there is 
more out there, then hopefully when you have audience, you can bring this up to the council and perhaps seek their wisdom. Although I, I, I don't know uh, how much luck you're gonna have impacting the world. They're, they're not letting people leave these days. Well, I'm not too worried about that. I'm pretty sure Hyperion has my back on this too. I, why are they not letting people leave? Queen put out an order. Um, there were some concerns about uh, security and the, and the, the, the larger picture of what, what was going on with the cult. And, and normally they're, I would call it overly cautious, uh, but the queen feels quite, quite strongly. So they've closed off exits. In fact, you know, my understanding was there was a, a bit of an uproar when uh, Hildy left with Hajimi, but uh, he was, well, I don't, I don't know the story, but I just know that there was an issue and it was raised and he pushed that he had to leave. Uh, and given like what he's done for the town, we, we couldn't very much turn it down. It sounds like the queen knows a bit more about this cult than she might be letting on. She's got advisors and sages, and they have access to the archives. Right. Well, that doesn't mean that they're just going to tell everybody everything all the time. Certainly. I mean, 200 years ago, they would have told our family anything we needed. Now it's stories on the outskirts of town. A festival once a year. Well, first things first. We're going to take a shot at bringing Sprocket back. And then we'll see what we can do to talk to the council about letting us leave again. And if not, we'll just fly out of here on the back of a gold dragon. So. And right at that moment, as you're saying that, you're you're looking over the, the yard uh, and, and at the... Uh, the large spot where, where grandma's urn is. Um, and I need, I mean, everybody need to roll a perception check. Seventeen. Okay. You all feel this as the, the ground beneath you begins to lightly shake. Uh, and uh, Alex, you specifically uh, noticed this first, uh, but eventually all of you hear it as there is a deafening horn blast uh, that, that comes over the air. Uh, the air itself is, is reverberating. Um, and Alex, you watch as Grandma's crystal is, is kind of shaking on its pedestal and slowly sliding to the side. Uh, and the horn blast stops and the ground finally settles. Uh, and then a few seconds later, the ground begins to shake again and you all hear this horn blast yet again. Um, and Alex, you watch as, the, as her crystal moves closer and closer to the edge. I would like to stop that crystal from falling. <laughs> Okay, how are you? How would you like to do that? Uh, I would just, I would have gotten up out of my chair when I noticed it going over the first time and just moved it back to the middle and then held my hands on it to keep it in place. Okay, uh, you get up, you run over in between blasts, and you manage to, to steady the crystal. Uh, but the, this horn is, 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 is just deafening. All of you have a ringing in your ears. Uh, the sound itself, you know, almost made your bodies ache. Uh, you've never heard anything this loud before. Um, and you all rolled well enough. That did not come from the city. Uh, Can we tell what direction uh, it did come from? I immediately sit there? Um, north. I think a thought, and you see, you see the blue owl fly off, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay, like, relatively near, but flies out. 
and is trying to look to the north, uh, and you'll see Bimgog's eyes white over. Um, yeah, you are able to to do that. Um, as far as high up as he flies, uh, he doesn't see. You don't see anything out of the usual or out of the ordinary. Um, it is. Um, it's still a beautiful day. Uh, you do notice that all, all the birds in the trees have, you know, been disrupted. And you do see wildlife uh, scattering and panicking, but there's no single direction uh, otherwise that they're, that they're really going or running to or running from. I can see Hyperion's cave entrance from the garden, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, does he come out at all? I'm going to keep an eye on that cave entrance. Okay. Serenia will assist Alex in stabilizing the crystal. It's, 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 essentially, it's essentially just like a, a 20 pound crystal. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what the fuck is going on. So four hands are better than two for this next little bit. Well, I mean, it'll be fine. Alex, we should probably go. Horn mean? Uh, it, I don't know. That's not one of ours. Unless we installed something new. Nothing that you can think of. You guys want to like head downtown and see if we can see what other people have to say? Okay. Miriam starts packing things up. Um, I guess uh, you all should go find out what's going on. Never a dull day as an adventurer. You're an adventurer. One last cookie <laughs> for the road. At least she, it yeah. was a pleasure and an honor to see you and to visit. Likewise. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, she 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 puts her her hand on your arm and reaches up to give you a hug. Um, and and she holds you you tight by the back of the head and says, you know, whispers, keep her safe. She's very important to this town. I swear it. Uh, as you all exit out the 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 front of the house, uh, you do see that there's a, a fair amount of of hubbub going on in the city. Uh, Alex, you finally notice Hyperion. Uh, step out of that high tower that he flew into the other day, uh, fly down into the uh, uh, over the city, uh, and he will land uh, a, a couple you know, 20, 30 feet away from you guys and retake his human form as he starts walking towards you. I'm, uh, I'm going to hustle on over to him. Hi, Perry. I'll, I'll light jog. Hey, Brodak. I don't suppose that was you, and you could put us all at ease now. No, that was not me. That, um, that was the dragon. It is Another one? A... No, not dragon. Draken. Uh, Draken. What's that? Thousands of years ago in the age of dragons at the height of the cult and even Tiamat's power. It was an instrument created to summon chromatic dragons. In, in those days, it was used to let them know of approaching danger, whether that be an army of giants or um, or something worse. It has been lost to time, or at least we thought. I will go find what I can. You all are safest here, but I have no doubt that the chromatic dragons will be gathering somewhere. The horn stirs something deep within my blood, Hyperion. I feel a connection to it. 
I do not seek safety or security. How can I help you? You can help by keeping focused on what you must achieve while I gather more information. This is going to be farther and faster than you all have traveled. And given the number of dragons that heard that, bunkering down is the right choice. When the hail comes upon your, 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 your town and your home, you do not go out to protect, go out to the garden. You reserve yourself in the strongest part of your town. Do you not? We go in cave when hell comes. This is your cave. There's good work that needs done here. I take my leave of you. The. Yes. And he, he takes a couple steps back and you just watch him just bolt into the sky, uh, taking off clearly at full speed. But the town is the town isn't quite in chaos, but the the jovial warmth of the city uh, has certainly uh, been disturbed uh, as some of the, the street vendors begin closing up their shops. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'll let my mom know that we're probably going to head back to the Whispering Oak. And oh, then... if, if they come looking for you, I'll tell them that you're there. I'm sure Barth Bartholomew let the regular contacts know as well. They communicate with him so often. Tell him I need a new, uh, a new cask sent over to put it on my tab. You got it. It was lovely meeting you all. Um, at this point, it's it's kind of like mid afternoon. Um, you all walk back to the the, the whispering oak. Uh, the the city uh, gone as its joyous light. Uh, the, the the streets still clean, uh, but a sense of of fear and anxiety hangs in the air uh, as you reach the door. Uh, the bar, which was full yesterday, uh, only has Bartholomew sitting behind it. Um, glasses poured and ready for you all. Uh, Serenia won't be drinking. She's going to be heading straight to the to the glaive. So, okay. um, handle everyone else to scene since. Um, Would anybody else like to go to the glaive? Uh, as as Bimgog notices Serenia start to kind of scurry off, and Bimgog does a side eye to the rest of the party. And he makes sure he locks eyes with Alex for a second, just to make sure that, you know, Alex knows like what he's up to. And he scurries off kind of after Serenia. And he doesn't really say anything. He's just kind of quietly following. Yeah, Serenia was not intending it to be a covert thing. It was like, a, hey, I'm going to go check in on the glaive. Be back. And then I guess Ben Bug is following. <laughs> okay, you there. The glade is on the east side of town, uh, and uh, it's basically an open air uh, garden. Uh, it, it is not a not a temple in the traditional sense, uh, but it is a place where druids who uh, live in Evening Star uh, tend to reside. There are some some small uh, residences built into it. Um, and as you're as you're walking around, you, you do notice a couple of um, the best way to put it is you notice that there are some trees that, in your experience, are probably shapeshifter druids. Uh, but as you walk in, uh, one of the trees will, uh, will, will 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 change back into uh, an elven form uh, and and greet you at the entrance. Hello. Uh, you are new to this town? I am. Um, my name is Serenia. I am in this town by invite of Alexandra Oldlaw. Um, 
understandably she is not a, a druid, but perhaps you know the family. I, I am not here to step on any toes, but as I am here during something that seems significant, I wanted to check in with the rest of the druidic population. Ah, well, my name is Alenda. Um, and yes, I know the, the Odla family. They are, um, there are the town's connections to the old ways. Um, and it was good that you are here. I appreciate you visiting. Uh, we, um, we heard the, the Drakenhorn and, uh, well, and she looks behind her. It has added a great deal of, of anxiety to our people, but we have no needs for anything if that is what you ask. Well, how has it added? Come, come, come in and, and, and sit. And of course, yes. Sits, sits down on the grass before you and uh, wait, uh, Bimbog, she sees you in the back and she smiles and she waves you in as well. Uh, Sardia, uh, as seeing Bimgog showing up, will explain to Alinda, uh, Bimgog is an uh, associate. I did not realize he was following, but I am not surprised. He has a large heart and um, after recent events does not do well with party members going off on their own so i am not surprised that he followed me but i do not think that this conversation needs to exclude him so you speak two days of, ago uh... i hugged a treant you did yeah wind song uh, wind song Vib's one of our friends now i i know wind song i uh i met him when he was but a sapper so cool so, what what can the glade offer you? You asked why it created anxiety among us. Yes. Well, everyone educated here uh, in Evening Star knows much of the history of the dragons, which is why the Odla family is so important. Keeper of stories is a big part of our well was a big part of our educational system. The, the Drakenhorn was long bordering thought to be almost a myth, uh, but its sound and its reverberation is, is unmistakable. The Drakenhorn to be, have been found. Naturally, we fear that the tides of change are coming for, for this world and while we are one to live within the cycle and understand its nature, change in any sense is scary. A boulder split in two is still a rock, but at the end of the day is no longer the same, much in the same way that this news has uh, shattered the resolve of some people. That's understandable. Something like this isn't even necessarily synonymous with a boulder because the horn calls in specific people of an align alignment. That, well, that is... It calls in chromatic dragons, an evil lot that you never want to see gathering. I was keeping it as high level as I could. Um, to we speak openly here. I see your I see your enclave insignia. This is not that place. We do not operate with the factions nor secrecy. We speak openly in this town. I am not even attempting uh, to to obfuscate. Uh, via the enclave. However, my end result is um, 
neutrality. Okay. But, but if there is a sudden influx of evil, yes, the obvious outcome is to fight it with an equal influx of good. Are you asking if there's a dragonborn for good at good dragons? <sighs> I think what I'm asking is what the local glade situation is. We're, because we're fine I, with the city. for now, you are fine for now. You felt the horn, so you yes. will not be fine forever. Is that just the natural cycle of life? The world, the world would change. It may become more or less hospitable, but life will find a way. We will do what we do best, and we will provide food and good weather for these people. Make it so that the city may endure as long as possible. You're right. You seek... I. I sense that you are seeking answers, and to which I can say I can provide none. Given which that is, you are new here, I will presume that you are an adventurer as well. Which is why I simply said, you are right, and I did not follow up with more questions. Okay. And God quietly goes, is there, a, is there a good dragon horn? No. <laughs> Not, not no. Perhaps one could be constructed, but the dragon horn was not constructed by mortal hands to begin with. I frequently find myself living within the balance of what is to be and what I can influence and sometimes I need reminded that I cannot influence all this is your city and if you are telling me you cannot do anything about the situation I respect that I am still going to work with my friends to do what we can and hopes that we can do that outside of the scope of things that will impact your city. I appreciate it. I, I'm sure that the, uh, the High Richter would be the person to ask where your talents could be best applied. Oh, do you have a Rocky Talkie though? Like we could really use... A Rocky Talkie? That can you no? Okay. I'll explain the Rocky Talkie because I forgot its actual terms. That sounds like an enclave device. Okay. We use bell phones, and she pulls a bell out. Of <laughs> How far can that go? Um, I'll well, take a bell phone. This is this is specific. It only works here in the city. Okay. Okay. Um She puts the tiny bell away. Well, ultimately um you are all druids and I am interested in your success and survival. If you can find a way to get a message to me outside of your enclave and and town, I will happily do what I can to help assist you. Your 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 offer is appreciated, and and we will certainly reach out to to you should we should we need your your assistance. And she she stands up and she steps back into uh, her her grass or into the 
the place where she was previously a tree and retakes her form. Come on, big dog. Let's go back to the tavern. Big dog just kind of follows. Okay. You all are in the tavern. Meals uh, are provided for uh, one gold piece a piece. Um, Broduck, the the food the feast is in front of you yet again. Your second plate, however, has the good berry on it. Well, you know what? That makes sense. Broduck isn't feeling a hundred percent, so he probably he probably eats his fill and then goes to bed quietly. Doesn't engage in much talk this evening. Bartholomew's uh, polishing a glass. Looks up at you, Alex. You got work to do? You're muted. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I probably do. And she throws back another shot of whiskey. How've, uh, how's your magic been treating you? Uh, oh, it's been actually really great lately. Um, that's that's been pretty solid. Um, there. I set a lot of things on fire. I mean, you know me. I just I just stuck with the shiny spells. They also happen to mostly be flammable. You know. I taught you that that magic you carry inside of you, it's like a lens. Your your mind and your heart, and he he pokes at your chest, and your resolve are what allow you to channel such a gift and while others in the city may gain similar benefits you've always had a a knack for it just remember you have to train you have to actually practice to get better yeah that was always my problem too wasn't it can't find answers at the bottom of of a bottle No, you're right. I haven't found any answers there yet. I was just making sure. The, so, uh, uh, has uh, have you heard anything uh, interesting come up uh, about today? The uh, the royal courts of Flurry. Um, there was some talk that. Uh, you all should have been brought in sooner. Uh, some disagreements in court, which is rare. Uh, Hyperion seemed anxious. Which I've never seen him before. Yeah. I know. I know that there is. Uh, I know that the the city, the the archivist, uh, or at least one of his assistants, has gone missing recently. Um, a batch of guards with him too. I, I feel like that's likely what they're going to bring up with, up to you all. Um, where they, could uh, one go? Where could one go missing within the city? Oh. Cities are built upon cities are built upon cities. There is a catacomb, which is where I suspect that he might have gone, which is where I suspect you all will be asked to venture. Do you have have anything of their clothing for tracking purposes? No. The, the, the the, The archives might have some of their personal belongings, but they couldn't have gone too far down into there. 
the question is, what you know, they went down with guards. Why didn't they come back? It's been about three, four days. What'd you ask the guards? We have a capable gloom stalker in our party. I know Bimgog will find the trail. Inside of him is the spirit of a giant. The craftiness of the cloud rune is but seated in his soul. To fit through catacombs. And we didn't ask the guards anything because the guards never came back either. But the the, the king and the, the the high regent and the queen will will fill you in. Get your rest. You all are going to need it. I will take my leave then, and and uh, Bjorno is going to go to bed. He's had about enough of today. During this whole time, we've been sitting at the bar. Hildy has been thigh touching, and then he just leaves, and she's like, oh. "He just walked away." That's all I'm yeah. saying. How obvious is that? For the rest of us. <laughs> Let's see how obvious. Then is. Hildy goes to bed because she is done with that shit. Not very for me. <laughs> oh, all perception. Woman's intuition. Seems way more obvious to you than to me. <laughs> hey, Adrian, will you, will you give it to me for uh, noticing? For a seventeen. For seventeen, oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, because I'm. Uh, that's... Your call, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super I, off, though. Uh, okay, so so Her as hand was like this. <laughs> as as Bjorno is walking away and Hildy is like super upset, so he's like, Bjorno, hey, before you go to bed, real quick. Bjorno turns on his heels. Are you, are you, you're going to bed? Tomorrow, adventure awaits. Uh, you're right. Have you said good night to everyone? Good Bjorn. night, everyone. Okay, good night, Bjorno. He'll just, uh, he'll just size. <sighs> Bjorno, he hasn't changed. Bjorno! Have you said good night to everyone? You just did. Good night, Bartholomew leans up over the bar. Good night, Bjorno. Good night, and Bartholomew. And then and like, he slides Bjorno. a drink over at Serenia. And Serenia, Bjorno's, the drink spills in your lap. Bjorno's <laughs> looking, ar looking around for Alice. <laughs> hey, what do I have? What, what do I have to roll Good for night, to Alice. not? And then my lap all of the, all of this is, wait a minute, all of this is happening, and Hildy <laughs> just gets up and runs and goes to bed. Done. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Hildy. Oh, Good night, Hildy. <laughs> Good night, Hildy. What just happened? Uh, Serena's go whisper to Alex, kind of loudly. Bjorn is a fucking idiot. <laughs> Can't isn't, say that thing about our party. That, I just yelled at Hildy I'm glad for that, calling people stupid. We can't be using those words about each other, you guys. It's not I'm very... really glad that Hildy's with us. I just, everything feels so much better when she's here. It's like the sun is shining and... Uh, yeah, then go tell her that. Go, what yeah. is wrong with go you people? The, the communication. <laughs> Well, he's communicating with us. He's telling us, you know, the good things. You are no, I... Oh, we're a bunch of gossip hounds. Anyway, Bartholomew, did you see um, anything else weird about the town? <laughs> Bartholomew's just sitting there going, uh, light, lighting matches and then, <laughs> and then throwing them into water. Matchmaker, matchmaker, <laughs> match. Weird about the town? Yeah, Same. you know, in the last few weeks since I've been gone, anything oh, like I was new, gonna, different. I was going to say that the, this giant, this giant horn blew and shook the earth and, and disturbed everyone. But that's really the weirdest thing. I that's know, happened. but like the like the last few weeks, like any strange things happen or things out of the usual or like looking back, you'd be like, hey, that was actually kind of weird.
you know, that I think about it, the no, it, it's not important. Oh, come on, just tell me now. Uh, I I shouldn't. It's court business. Well, I'm gonna have to go deal with those guys eventually. So anything you could share to help. They're very yes. intimidating. Please, please, it would be most useful. You to know, us. I'm not I am good very at persuasive. You oh know my I'm god, not I'm good so at persuasive. People. Look how persuasive I am. Yes. <laughs> the, you've been gone for a couple months. And this Hajimi person showed up a few weeks after you left and ingratiated himself with the leadership. Uh, they were surprised by his ingenuity. The fact that he found the town at all uh, was, was a testament to his, his skill uh, and, and talents and, and just the high Richter always believed in the importance of the tradition that you and your that your family set forth and the queen just took so much more of an up upspoken role since the genie came in it's it's not normal she's br brilliant brilliant woman for me and for or, and, and far be it for me to 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 say anything uh, other than my support of, of her um, but you know they 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 put up the, the 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 monument at at your at your mother's house and they they've changed what you know the teachings uh, you know the the temple no longer receives uh you know it's 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 monthly festival uh, you know it's funny you should bring up that name. I'm much, I'll, I'll like double check to make sure Hildy actually is like out of the room for this. And then I'll lean over and be like, you know, I actually heard from a guy that that Hijimi fellow sucks. He's not even a good artificer. Apparently he just steals his ideas from other people and passes them off as his own. <laughs> well, that's well, at that's... least what, what one guy said about it. And I, I trusted him. He's currently stuck in a sword. Otherwise, he would have said the same thing. That's I've, exactly what he would have said. I've, I've never seen anybody invent the way he invents. And quite frankly, having the resources we have here in regards to magic at his disposal, he only got stronger. But he invented some incredible stuff, some incredible things. You know, if it's never been done before, it's probably cheating. We should probably look into this Hajimi fellow. Well, the Damo, he, though, I don't think Hildy would be happy about that. He said, I know that he was supposed to be heading towards Waterdeep uh, to meet the council there. To oh, discuss yeah, he got kidnapped by vampires like two days ago. That was another thing that I forgot to mention. We have to find the vampire castle in this one region because Hajime got kidnapped and we're pretty sure he's he got, there. He and got if, kidnapped? Yeah, and if he is really as good as people say he is, even though I'm a little bit suspicious of that claim, then they probably would have kept him alive and not turned so, him into a vampire because I would like mess up his magic. So surprised they could take him at all. Well, unless he set up the whole thing as a hoax, in which case would prove what Sprocket has been saying this whole time. He looked Fair rather enough. uncomfortable as the bird grabbed him and drug him into the sky. Well, that was another, gosh, there's so much going on. Sprocket would have been able to keep all this clear. We really got to get him out of the sword. He actually, I, I mean, I can show you one of his, one of his inventions. Would you like to see? I'm gonna look over to Bemgog for approval. 
Oh, we might as well. Right, and you, I guess we'll look at it. You you watch him. He he reaches under uh, the bar and pulls out a set of uh, very large gauntlets. They're made up of, of flat plates, um, and 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 it seems like like you would think that it, it's like uh just like they, they wouldn't be connected but you can tell they move as a singular object uh and he and he takes them and he uh, he slides his hand into them uh and they they form into these the, these like mechanized fingers uh and he reaches down and he grabs a keg and he just picks it up and, and he and he palms it in front of you Oh, that also reminds me, my ma needs a couple more of those casks. I'll, I'll send one over. Bjorno, Bjorno's going to give a hard look over to Broduck, like, oh. Broduck is not there. Oh, Bjorno's oh, yeah, there. Broduck, Broduck is sleeping. His fat belly sleeps. Oh, he's making a sleep. These, and he called these the sleep. bionic amplifier of muscular function, I believe was the term. Kind of a lame name, but okay. I can see how those would be useful. They're, they're pretty nifty. What? I'm sorry, Gump Bim Dog? Bamps. It's not that yes. bad of a name, but it's kind of yes. bad. Yes. Bamps. 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 Yes. Bionic amplifier of muscular function. Anyway. All right. Well, I guess that is kind of cool. Yeah, they're still they're, sus though. They're pretty neat. I, I mean, they they help me lift things, and um, well, here I can show you something. And uh, you know, he he kind of grabs a stool. And he puts the keg down. He grabs a stool and stands on top of it and takes his hand and he flattens it. And he jumps up and he taps the ceiling, and you all watch as the as it grabs onto it. And he just kind of hangs there from his hand. Well, why would you need to do that in a bar? Why not? That just does a lot of things. Great. How many times have we been attacked in a bar? That's great. He lets, he lets go. They only made a few of them, but I managed to, to get one and saves, saves my back. How much money? Uh, money, this, this is not a money thing. How many favors? Not favors either, lass. What do you want? A technomancer makes you something like this. You don't give it up. Uh, you, you, maybe you put it in your will. <laughs> do you have children? Uh, I don't. Uh, and, and no offense, a uh, giantess ain't my type. I'm a short king, but you know, I, I, this may help me climb trees, but uh, I, 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 I pity the creature that gets grappled by one of these. Into a human shape and say, I could be your. Um, uh, I, <laughs> you're missing the requisite parts, Lass. I. But I appreciate I, it. I could, though. I. Could. Now, if a handsome lad like Bjorno came down and started shifting to be a little smaller, listen, we might be talking. Listen, I I could be a requisite shape. Um, uh, based on, but it, no, it's okay. This is awkward enough. We don't have to go further down this. I'm, it's just I'm gonna uh, go to that's bed. That's a now. very <laughs> useful skill. I think you're a bit deep in your cups. I just before you go nuts. to bed. Before you go behind to, Serenia, oh, you just sorry. see. You see uh, Bimgog start doing a little like shake and dance that he did at the club, but it's, it's just really, it's really terrible. Sorry, go on, uh, Bjorno. Oh, before you go to bed, perhaps for breakfast. I know Hildy really likes the chocolate strudel. If if you could make something like that or or chocolate pancakes, she just loves chocolate. I want to make sure she gets something delicious. Of course, She's, of course. She looked angry before she went to bed, and I don't like her angry. Nobody, no, how hath no fury like a woman scorned? 
Well, I don't know about scorn. She just looked angry. So I just want her happy. I've got you covered. All right. Good night, friends. Good night. Strange, Good strange night, ones. Good night, Bjorno. Bjorno stops at Hildy's door and like all goes to knock and then stops himself at the last second and like runs to his own room. As you guys go to bed, you hear uh, Bartholomew walking by and you hear the chime sound of uh, alarm being cast on each of your doors for you. Morning arrives. Pencils with me tonight. Morning arrives. Uh, Hilda, you wake up and there is a, a, a three rose bouquet. Uh, one of the roses is made of chocolate. Uh, there are chocolate covered pancakes uh, with a heart of uh, syrup on them, uh, assorted fruits and nuts, um, and a note that uh, these are vegan pancakes and vegan chocolates. <laughs> Well, Hildy definitely takes them into her room and enjoys them profusely. Not knowing who they're from, she goes, I have a secret admirer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not, not a not secret. Not. It's not a secret and it has never been one. <laughs> Hildy doesn't know that. <laughs> she just has pancakes and chocolate. <laughs> oh, that's life. Pancakes um. and chocolates. Your guy, yeah, there is when you all come down in the morning, uh, somebody wearing uh, a formal uh, re regalia, uh, clear that they are from the court, uh, waiting for you in the lobby. Um, as each of you come down, uh, he approaches, um, introduces himself as uh, McCurry, and uh, explains, that I am I am here to escort you all to the High Richter, uh, your attendance this morning. Uh, I realized originally we were planned for the for the afternoon and potentially an evening banquet. Uh, unfortunately, due to us uh, events, as I'm sure you can imagine, it has been requested that you all uh, come earlier in the day. We are ready. I do hope that we can all um, accommodate that. I'm confident that you can. But. Uh, Please eat, and, and whenever you're ready, uh, we, we will make way. Brooke will come down for uh, breakfast, and you'll notice that he seems to be missing some patches of fur around his body, um, almost like he he got like a really bad haircut on select portions of his torso and his arms. Some even going down as far as to be like almost shaved on like some of his bicep parts um, his forearms. Brodok, what the fuck? What? Uh, I, I, you shedding? I shed. No, what happened to your fur? Oh, I needed it. For what? I had to make grandma. And he like reaches into his backpack and he pulls out a fur oh. doll. It's like the size it's of perfect. almost Van Gogh. Hi, Grandma. I made a I made a thing like Alex has crystal for her grandma. I make this for my grandma. That is so sweet, Brodock. Now I have Grandma with me. Um, That's exactly how that works. That you, uh, that is part of your grandma because your grandma is within you. Don't overthink it, Serenia. No, I. She's in me. Uh, I eat her. I, no, the I, I, not like brother. I, 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 I eat him. I, you did good. You did good. And you'll even see that the little grandma doll is not just a hair doll, but it also looks like he took some of the bedding and ripped it up and made like a makeshift outfit for it too. 
if this is, we, this is absolutely lovely. If we can try, Brodong, I, I will only do this if you want me to do this. We can see if enough of your grandma is in the doll to become intelligent, like Alice became intelligent. Oh, Sirenia, no, don't do that. Let's Why see what you enjoy. I don't understand. Yes, why that's wouldn't too I, much why wouldn't for I, him. Why wouldn't I do that? It's so too much. You so can't for, just go for... around awakening everything. I that's can, just... actually. Don't okay, do but that. like, we don't live in Disney World. No, I shouldn't, <laughs> but I can. Those are two different things. For, for context, um, Alice was always alive. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, Awaken would not work on something like this. Uh, <laughs> to create a totem spirit would definitely require parts of his grandfather. Hey, Dave, it doesn't matter if Awaken would or wouldn't work. It's if I would be willing to expend Awaken to sure. try, right? Sure. Which is a different conversation. I never thought it, I would be concerned if it worked. But <laughs> why would you even bring it up? Yeah, that that that, that uh, is... difference of Serenia versus Callie, first of all, y'all. Well, Alex is a- actually asking these questions. <laughs> yeah. Hildy might go in on that one too of what would that prove is except to bring up his hopes and destroy them. I uh, did that yesterday. I, the 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 point is to bring to to give his grandmother a body. I gave her body. Exactly. Yeah, she's, already, she's already good. No. Uh, she's already got a body. We're good now. Yeah, sorry, Annie. I let it go. No, you guys are putting your own intelligence versus Brodunks and pushing off things that may or may not be valid to push off because you feel uncomfortable with it. Well, it's not necessarily that I'm uncomfortable. It's just that you're giving false hope to a child. Ah, my old nemesis rears its head again. Moral relativism. (laughs) A one-minute spell, I do not believe, gives false hope to anyone. It succeeds or it fails. I'd rather find real grandma. You can find your grandma. We'll keep an eye out for her, Brodok. She's gotta be somewhere. He puts the hair doll back in his backpack, but it stays sticking out like it's like a in a papoose almost. <laughs> well, uh, Brodok, you, you have two grandmas, right? I do. Technically three. I thought my 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 mom my mom's mom is my grandmother. That's what Alex yeah. said. Yes, and your dad's mom is also your grandma. He... I'm gonna need more fur. So <laughs> I ultimately what everyone here is saying is if your mom's mom's dead. We need to stop pursuing this because your grandma's dead. But if your dad's mom's alive, you have a grandma. I never said that his mom's mom was dead. You, we gotta She's go court, dead. you guys. <laughs> Bugbears don't live very long. Uh, sorry, bro, dog. Bartholomew leans up. Bugbears live to be about eighty. So it's right oh. here in the uh, in, in, the, in the beer book. <laughs> They do? Oh, well, then yeah. maybe your grandma's still alive. I I guess I just thought that they get killed a lot. That's you could probably, probably true. You could probably find a blood mage who could do some uh, some research. That sounds yeah, bad. Where, where's one of those? Um, well, I knew the guy before you went missing out at Greenst. I mean, hemothergy is a rare trait, but one of the largest cities, you might be able to check the academies. 
Uh, I don't know that we have any uh, hematurgists here, but some magic, such magic isn't outside of the realm of possibility. And the boy needs a gram, uh, a mother figure if I've ever seen one in need of one. Uh, Serenia will turn, go to the Rocky Talkie, go to the Enclave. Hematurgy, help, please, bro dunk, and send that. Uh, you receive back what? I have to wait 24 hours. Why do they suck at responses? We should go to place that we have to go to. Uh, I'll be I'll be coming with you all. I'm needed on the court anyway, and and uh, Bartholomew grabs his uh, his vamps, uh, puts them on, uh, and uh, walks with you. Uh, you all walk through the city. Uh, Bartholomew and, and I'm sure Alex pointing out a, a few cho choice locations, a very nice bar, a great place for pastries, uh, a that magic That stand school. that has amazing falafel, but it looks like he shut down for the rest of the day, which is a shame because we could have gotten some falafel. Mm. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's Gert's magic shop. Uh, he's always worth checking out. Uh, and uh, you guys arrive at the uh, the center of government, and that is where we're going to call it tonight. Uh, so hope you guys had fun uh, exploring Sports. Evening Star, uh, basically D and D Wakanda. Don't sue me, Disney. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining our game tonight. We'll be back next week where the party gets to uh, meet some royalty, rub some elbows, uh, and find out just what went wrong. <laughs> fun, fun. <laughs>